This is BullionBullsCanada.com. Welcome to the first audio interview for our Bullion Bulls Canada audience. We plan to start things off with a bang, and it is our great pleasure to announce that our first guest will be none other than Adrian Douglas. He is the publisher of the Market Force Analysis Newsletter, and for those interested in visiting his website, we will have a link published along with this interview. In addition to his own work as a precious metals analyst, he is also a director of GATA, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. We have posted some additional biographical information on Adrian Douglas along with this interview as well. In terms of recent events, Adrian Douglas is perhaps best known by precious metals enthusiasts for being the person who metals trader Andrew McGuire approached after he was spurned by the CFDC when he attempted to act as a whistleblower in those recent hearings. What followed is the highly publicized blockbuster interview on the King World News program, which features both Adrian Douglas and Andrew McGuire in his first public interview. Without further delay, I now present Jeff Nielsen of Bullion Bulls Canada and Adrian Douglas of GATA. Adrian, thank you very much for finding time to do this interview for us and our audience. I'm uh, pleased to be on the interview, Jeff. Now, I won't go through another recap of the famous King interview, since I'm sure that virtually every member of our audience has either already listened to the interview directly or read our, our summaries of what took place. So let's move on to looking at the precious metals market after those major revelations have had some time to sink into the psyches of investors. Adrian, now that you've had a few weeks to observe the fallout from the news, which you helped to break, in what way do you think the precious metals market has fundamentally changed from how it looked to you only one month earlier? I think we're starting to see different trading patterns, uh, although there's, there's still in, uh, clearly uh, an, a suppression of the price going on on the COMEX. Uh, but I think we have uh, awakened the awareness in a lot of investors uh, to look very closely at uh, their investments and you know what we've tried to bring to the fore here is that uh, you know there's a lot of paper substitutes for the precious metals, and uh, you know bu buying those investments first of all uh, will uh, not actually influence the price of the precious metals uh, if those are not backed. Um, but secondly, the investor may uh, uh, be settled in cash when the prices of the metals go up. And he may then be unable to enter the market with real physical metal uh, at anywhere close to the price that he's being cashed out at. So, you know, he, he may well lose a significant part of the, the market rise. So, uh, getting to this issue of delivery and uh, cash settlements, uh, has there been enough time to see any difference in the pattern of uh, buyers taking delivery, or is it still too early to, to see a, a noticeable change in something like that? Uh, we're starting to see some changes, but I think it's too early uh, for us to see a significant change. Um, but I think this will will snowball. It's uh, I think it's uh, it's quite a short time after the revelations we made at the CFTC meeting. So you know it takes time for this news to uh, to spread, and it takes time for people to react to it. But uh, we are seeing some some early signs of that, and I think it's only going to grow. Now, in your most recent commentary, you focused on the issue of bullion delivery and bullion security with respect to the bullion accounts with the LBMA, the London Bullion Market Association. This organization bills itself as the London-based trade association that represents the wholesale over-the-counter market for gold and silver in London. Could you take a minute to explain to our audience in greater detail what functions the LBMA performs in the bullion market? Yes, and they uh, are as you say, uh, uh, tabled as the physical market. And uh, what we heard from uh, Jeff Christian in the, uh, in the CFTC meeting is that that's a misnomer, that we refer to it as the physical market, but is essentially a paper market. And they do perform the function of delivering uh, physical metal through the spot market to people who want to buy metals and must have metals and take delivery of them. Um, but uh, there's a lot of trade, in fact the majority of trade occurs through unallocated accounts. So they offer allocated accounts and unallocated accounts, but most of the business occurs in unallocated accounts. And what I pointed out in the CFTC meeting is the uh, absolutely astonishing numbers that are associated with the trade in the unallocated accounts. Um, it trades 
from their own numbers, a net 20 million ounces of gold a day. Uh, that's not gross, that is net ounces transferred. Uh, that is 625 tons. And if you multiply that up on an annual basis, it's, it's 162,500 tons. Uh, you could probably say the gross trading is about three times that, which would be 487,000 tons. An awful uh, so lot of physical metal. <laughs> that's, that's a heck of a lot of physical metal. Uh, that's worth $6.3 trillion a year uh, in trade uh, on the net basis. And if we estimate the gross basis to be three times that, it's $18.9 trillion. So on a net basis, that is getting on for 60% of the whole entire U.S. economy. And on a gross basis, it's getting on for a third of the entire global economy. And these are monumental numbers that are difficult to get your head around. Uh, so what I pointed out in, the, in the, um, the CFTC meeting is that these numbers are, are so big, it's impossible that, uh, that the trading is on a 100% backing. Uh, there just wouldn't be enough gold and silver around for that. And what I pointed out is if you go to the LBMA website, uh, it actually leads you to that conclusion from their own statements because they say that unallocated accounts uh, are held by, by uh, uh, people who will be unsecured creditors. Well, that's the first red flag. I mean, how can you be an unsecured creditor? If you were to buy 100 tons of gold, uh, if it's unallocated um, because it's pooled with other customers' uh, purchases, uh, it's still there. You still have 100 tons, but you're not given the serial numbers. Well, the fact they say you're an unsecured creditor and you have a general claim against their inventory means that uh, this is a fractional reserve operation and then not 100% backing uh, the metal. And as I say, you have to really come to that conclusion when you look at the uh, ginormous volumes that they're, they're trading. Uh, so, you know, I think this is a revelation for uh, even some very seasoned analysts and people who have been in the business a long time, is just how, um, how much paper gold essentially is being traded. And the issue here is that if uh, gold, in inverted commas, is being sold, uh, but doesn't exist uh, in this refractional reserve uh, uh, system, then the price of gold will not go up with those purchases. Uh, they can just make another ledger entry and sell another 100 tons, another 200 tons, and the price will not be affected. The price can only go up if those purchases are backed 100% with metal. Then metal has to come off the market, and clearly we'd have a, a shortage very quickly. Yes, well, when you uh, wrote that commentary and I was reading it, I certainly seized upon that uh, quote of unsecured assets as well. But backing up just a bit for our audience here, they may not totally understand the distinction between unallocated and allocated accounts and why you were particularly focusing on those unallocated accounts. Could you just uh, uh, differentiate that for our viewers to a bit more detail? Yes, and, and it's a very important point because I think uh, there's a lot of confusion and particularly because various organizations use a different uh, definition of unallocated. So let's first deal with allocated because that's easy. Uh, allocated, uh, segregated, uh, gold or silver is when you buy, for example, a 400 ounce bar of gold. And if it's allocated, uh, it's put on one side for you in the vault and you get a serial number for that bar. So Quite clearly, that is your gold. It's being held for you. You could go and see it and check the serial number. Uh, so your gold is, 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 is there. The unallocated, uh, as I was saying earlier, people would tend to think unallocated uh, means that it's there, but you don't have serial numbers. So let's say, for example, I want to buy 200 ounces of gold, and you want to buy 200 ounces of gold. Well, we can't have each a 400 ounce bar of gold with a serial number because we haven't bought 400 ounces of gold. But together, we've bought 400 ounces of gold. So one gold bar can be put on one side for us, but neither of us will receive the serial number. Um, but we've got 400 ounces between us, we've got 200 